Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Find Your Model Health, the official podcast for those looking to optimize their long term health and weight goals and understand how their body really works. I am your host. I am Shemaine Linney. I'm a fitness and nutrition expert, certified iridologist, and biohacker. And I'm very happy to have you back with me for another part of your day. Today, I have a very exciting guest for you. In my opinion, he is highly intelligent, so I am excited for him to bring some real gems to the conversation. But before I go on, I must remind you that the information in these podcast episodes is for informational purposes only and should not be taken as medical advice. Please consult your health practitioner before making any lifestyle changes. So today we are joined by Amate Eshel. Most of you won't have heard from him, but Amate is, um, he is CEO of a very exciting company called Young Goose Skin Care. And he has been in the biohacking and beauty field for quite some time, holding executive roles um, and also been in the beauty industry for over a decade and has been a business development consultant in this space. Amate is co-founder and CEO of Young Goose, the biohacking skincare company and host of Young Goose's biohacking beauty podcast. Amate is here to talk to us about uh, maintaining youthful skin, optimizing skin's appearance, how that all works. Really, we're going to delve deep into it. I'm um, we're all well aware there are other natural skincare companies out there, but your name is going to be newer to most of my followers and clientele. So I'm excited for you to kind of preach the gospel, as you say. Um, but before that, how you have quite an interesting background. I'm going to let you tell it. Where did you get into all of this and why? Well, that's, I think, first of all, it's a pleasure being here, um, and I'm I'm very excited to to share, you know, as I said, to share the gospel, share our our the way we view uh, the world of health or skin health with with your audience, with you. Um, as far as how I started is probably similar to m many of your audiences, where I wanted you know optimal performance. That's that's kind of where I came from. I come from a military background. I was in Israeli special operations. Uh, got recruited into tech at some point, and um, you know, health health is something that's extremely important to me. And I ended up being a, an executive in a in one of the first red light therapy companies, uh, which which is, I mean, when we when we were looking at red light therapy or we were looking at converting low level lasers in. From from physical therapy into the into the consumer space, we were looked at, you know, as basically as <laughs> as lunatics. Ooh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And and it's very nice to to see that something that my heart and soul was soul was invested in for a very long time is now something that's pretty much you know well accepted and and uh, but that's really you know, what brought me down, what brought me into this, uh, this path of, of um, being an entrepreneur in health and wellness and uh, biohacking, longevity, whatever you, whatever, whatever you would want to label it as, mm. as that. And um, what happened to us, what one of the challenge, challenges that um, really turned me into maybe physical appearance is uh, when we were trying to explain to people why they should use red light therapy, um, we came at it from from a performance oriented view, right? We were like, okay, listen, if you used it now three times a week, in 10, 20 years, you're gonna be a a, a much healthier person. Mm -hmm. But for most people, that was not something that they were interested in, or they even believed that uh, red light therapy would do that. But most people were really interested when we or or their eyes kind of opened up when we told them that can improve their skin and how youthful they look. And I, I, my brain, or I made a connection between people's health journey and how it expresses in their skin, because a lot of the times it, it doesn't, you're going to lose weight. You're going to expose yourself, yourself to, 
you know, external stressors, um, you know, uh, hot climate, cold, cold climate, um, being outside, running, whatever that may be, um, going through uh, rigorous workouts, and we can go on and on and on. A lot of the times, even if our health is going to improve, our skin is either not going to improve or actually get worse because we are not matching that therapeutic effect on the skin as well. And um, that was something that a lot of piece that a lot of people were missing within within their health journey, because most of us, I don't want to say everyone, but 99% of people, if they feel better, they want to look in the mirror and have something reflected there that's going to tell them, yeah, you're right, you're in the right path. It's not only in your head. Um, you know, maybe they even want other people to tell them, you look amazing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you lost 20, 30, 40 pounds, 50, pounds, whatever that is, uh, you want people to tell you, oh, you look much better, you lost all that weight. And then you want also people to come back like a month, two months, three months later and tell you, oh, you look even better than that. You know, your skin looks better or whatever. So uh, most people, it was very, it, it was a missing piece. That's not how Young Goo started though. Mm. Because I, you know, when we started this project, what we really wanted is to have, and we're, I'm sure we're going to talk about NAD, but we wanted to have NAD be available for people in other forms than what it was available to people when we started this project, which was mainly back then uh, IV drips and supplements. Supplements back in the day were almost not, av not available and they were very expensive and IVs were over $1,000 per mm. IV. And we tried to get it to absorb through the skin. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it didn't. <laughs> it didn't. And the skin liked it so much that even if we could get it to absorb into the skin, the skin kind of held on to it. Mm. So we made lemonade out of lemons because it was in our head, right? People want to look better. And AD is like the fountain of youth. And we'll get to it in a second. But um, we just made lemonade out of lemons and made a skincare product that improves, that, that improves NAD levels in the skin. And the company grew from there. And that's, that's a very interesting topic, but I'll let you... Uh, I'll, I'll stop talking for a second here. This is a fascinating topic. Uh, a lot of people's health journeys and weight loss journeys, it is very superficial. It very much is that physical component, which people, in my experience, don't always like to admit. But I think that's very important because when people look in the mirror and they see this difference, there is a big psychological and motivational factor there for them. It's one thing to see, oh, my pants are smaller. But if you've been suffering with acne or feeling you're aging faster than you should be, seeing that turnaround can encourage someone to continue, like you said. And that's the problem nowadays is people are not continuing. They're starting, but they're not keeping going. So um this topic is amazing and we're going to touch on NAD now if you don't mind because yep. here's the thing I'm hoping that you can start from the ground up assuming nobody knows anything about NAD. NAD from what I see with my clients and people who come across this word NAD it's very much oh my god I don't understand that that's too sciencey for me or that's biochemistry I, I don't want to know anything about that but on a molecular level, on a level of importance, NAD is very important for us. So can you please treat yeah. us as if we know nothing and just explain NAD? Yeah, I think, yeah, and I'd love to do that. Um, I think we can look at it in a, few, in a few different levels, but the most basic level is we need to first understand it's a very safe molecule. It's a molecule that we've known for a long time. It's obviously made by our body or mean the levels are maintained by our body and um the person who got a nobel prize for for the discovery of the few details about nad was over a hundred it's 102 years ago is when when they got a nobel prize so 1921 mm -hmm. um but for around you know 60 70 years after that we only thought it's it's a type of um so it's a type of um, like a very a cog in the in the wheel, if you would, of of energy creation in our body. A anywhere that energy is created, it was playing a part, and it still does that. But now we understand 
that this molecule is really the culprit in everything that we call aging, okay? And the reason is because if you look at aging, really what it is, it's the accumulation of unre unrepaired damage and every level that we want to talk about it from a DNA level to cellular level to, you know, to, to whole body, whole mechanism um, um, processes or, or, or complexes. So anything from us having a, an injury in our knee to, mm. uh, and, and that de debilitates us to the information that is stored in every one of our cells, all of it, everything that we think of as aging or, or looking at the side and saying, this person is older than they were yesterday, really is that accumulation of damage and the ability of the body also physically and also emotionally, and I'm going to get to it in a second, uh, to create, to repair that damage is, is, um, dependent on an AD and the lack of an AD is the culprit on, of, of, of that lack of repair. And when I, when I say that is you can think of NAD as the fuel for any repair process in the body or part of that fuel. NAD lowers with age. So every, you know, when we're 30, we have appropriate levels. And by the time we're 60, we have half of those. And again, every time when I say physically, but also emotionally, it's a heuristic, but you can think of NAD also as that fuel for repair, but also a lot of mechanisms. Look at the amount of NAD that the body has, and they're not even going to bother working if NAD isn't, you know, if, they, if we don't have a lot of NAD. So that's why I say also emotions. Like imagine if you are looking at a task that you have, and you have a certain amount of energy that you feel, you are going, you're not going to perform the task well if you don't have enough energy, right? But you also are not even going to bother starting if you feel lack of energy. And that is a big, like a zooming out or, or a heuristic way to explain what NAD does. So it's involved in over 600 processes of repair and it just lowers with age. And that is really playing a part in every little piece of, 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 of aging, every, every, every definition of aging that we know of. And, and we basically have substantiated what aging is. We, this, this science is, is really well researched and, uh, backed by by legit science. So for the last, I mean, the last time we really had some groundbreaking, you know, theory that was proven in, in aging was around over 10 years ago. Um, so we, we know what aging is, we know what's going on, and we know NAD is, is a major part of NAD or NAD levels are a major part of, of that aging process. Especially, by the way, in the skin, because our skin, as we grow older, the skin becomes more and more the buffer between the onslaught of the environment, UV radiation, pollution, um, uh, oxidative stress, our stress in, in our body, a lot of the things that are, you know, physical abrasions, etc. A lot of the things that um, our body is kind of protecting us against, it's really our skin protecting our body. And every time that happens, there is more and more and more demand for NAD. And that demand is being, so imagine we have less NAD, therefore there's more damage. Mm -hmm. Therefore, our skin needs more NAD. Therefore, it uses up more NAD and we have less NAD and there, then more damage, et cetera. So it's a snowball that we really, actually, we really want to start early, but it's never too late to replenish NAD levels or to have high NAD levels where there is always a place to to boost NAD levels, but that's really what it is. It's that we can think of it as fuel for our engine mm -hmm. for every cell in our body. And Dr. Dr. Rhonda Patrick and David Sinclair, as you know, has done a lot of work about around um, NAD. And just to clarify for people, NAD does stand for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. But what are some other Apart from aging, what are some other factors that would deplete NAD in the body? Wow, that's a good question. And and again, like this is um this is uh a um a a I don't know how far we want to get into the into the rabbit hole, but I'm gonna say two things. Mm -hmm. First is kind of what I said. Okay, so okay, 
So our body, since NAD is so important, our body tries to recycle all the NAD that it has. But as we know, there are always microsc microscopic, nanoscopic um, errors that are happening. So that already depletes NAD in the body. It's very hard to get NAD from food sources for many reasons. So B vitamins in, or excuse me, B3 vitamins in general, uh, which we can find in uh, meat, dairy, um, some some um, some uh, wheat, etc. Um, they contain B vitamins um, mm. or or B three for that matter, in specific forms of B three. For example, um, uh, niacin, niacinamide, uh, nicotinamide mononucleotide, nicotinamide riboside, uh, tryptophan, um, which is kind of what makes you sleepy in. Uh, in um turkey christmas turkey coma yeah exactly so um these things have b3 vitamins but not only that they don't have enough to really replenish nad levels in the body uh they are also really volatile so by the time we uh we they go through processes or they sit in the sh you know in the grocery store and they're frozen defrosted b back and forth these are not very they don't really exist that much. And most of them turn into niacinamide, which is kind of no, non-flush niacin, which is not the best form in the world. Definitely, this is a, another 10-minute conversation. Why? But you can think of it as the least favorable way to replenish NAD levels. Mm. Um, so that is that that those are kind of the two reasons. First, it's really hard to get. And second of all, that recycling pathway is never completely perfect. Now, this is as far as like having enough. Now, we also want to think about the fact that as we age every day, there are billions and trillions of cells that require NAD, more NAD than they did yesterday because there's more damage there. Mm. So we're, we're, we we are also depleting it because more processes need, need it, more enzymes need it. So, you know, if we, again, and, and we're going here from like a, a kind of meta, you know, uh, vision of it to the, yeah. to, to the micro vision of it, but within our, so it all comes back again to DNA damage, which is the most fundamental form of damage. And in our DNA, there are two enzymes that are competing for NAD. And really that competition is the way that we can really understand why NAD is non-existent at the levels that we want it to be existent and what happens when we don't have enough. So um, one of them are called sirtuins. You mentioned David Sinclair. That's a lot of his research is about sirtuins. The book Lifespan is really about sirtuins. And um, these are really the police of our DNA. So you can think of our DNA as as as, as a as a recipe for every for who we are, and that recipe becomes murky. It's be, becoming harder and harder to read as we grow older. And the the sirtuins are kind of the police, making sure that the that the recipe is not being vandalized, is not being um, is not being disorganized, and it keeps it. Uh, in, in a good form. So they require NAD. Unfortunately, also a, another set of enzymes that are called PARPs, and we can think of them as the fire department. Every time there is DNA damage, they go in and, and put out that fire. Uh, they, they, they correct that damage or they lower the, the uh, impact of that damage. And they also require NAD. And as mm. the, the older we get, the more they are required to operate and the more NAD they require. And then we don't have enough NAD for our sirtuins. Mm -hmm. So the DNA becomes less and less readable. Then it again, it breeds more and more DNA damage, which then deprives uh, NAD from, from our sirtuins more and more and more. So yeah, so so this is this is going back to the very microscopic level, of course, in our skin. Going back to the skin, if you've ever heard about, um, you know, th there are a lot of memes about dermatologists and how they emphasize uh, sunblock. 
which mm. which is a, a very hot topic right now. Mm -hmm. But um, UV radiation and also blue light to some extent damage DNA. So they require so every the more we're outside, the more we are exposed to UV radiation, the more we need NAD, the less we have NAD, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I would think the blue light is more of a concern than the UV nowadays. I think, uh, well, we don't live in Florida, but most people here in Alberta and across Canada and Ireland, where I'm from, people are spending more time inside in front of blue lights and LEDs than they are outside. Um, and this is something I'm hoping that we can drive home is that exposure to blue light chronic exposure which is nearly everybody it, it it will damage your skin it will age you not only externally but also internally uh can you speak on that a little bit yes so so this is called hev okay uh high energy visible light which would be blue light so um, the more we get from, from if you imagine the spectrum, you can imagine a rainbow. The bottom of that ra rainbow, the inside circles of that the, that rainbow are blue or or ultraviolet for that matter. But but mainly, you know, we can see the blue color. And they are shorter wavelengths. It means that they do this more times. And it means that they travel through the body. Those photons travel through the body more times per the allotment of time that you have. So if you have a lot of energy associated with them, they create stress in the body. Um, um, and that stress becomes oxidative stress. Now, normally that's not an issue. The one, the, the blue light that we're getting from, from the sun isn't, doesn't have that type of energy. Mm -hmm. um, and it also is in lower concentrations in, in the, rather than what we get in, in our artificial light that, that is in, in, in our ceilings or computers, TV, uh, phones, obviously, etc. Mm -hmm. um, and that light is very, very, very damaging as far as like uh, oxidative stress. It creates oxidative stress in the skin. And again, we're getting back to, you know, DNA damage, etc. But mm -hmm. another point that maybe is more, um, you know, would interest someone more, uh, you know, for tomorrow in a short term is the fact that if unless you're what we call a Fitzpatrick one, so there's a scale of skin color, skin shades, one is the lightest you can imagine. So unless you are, you know, born Irish. and raised in Ireland, exactly, <laughs> and you're a Fitzpatrick one, yeah. blue light also specifically activates your melanin, the pigment creating sites, um, uh, cells of your skin. And that, because again, we're getting back to that recipe for who you are is not acting 100% correctly, that can create pigment in an uneven fashion, which would cause, guess what? Pigmentation, hyperpigmentation. Um, mm -hmm. So it doesn't only create aging in 10, 20 years. It would also exacerbate the uneven pigment that you have today or that you will have tomorrow in your skin, especially if you're doing other cosmetic procedures and you're like, after, let's say you did uh, laser and plastic surgery and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I'm not going to expose myself to the sun. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sit inside all day and I'm going to be on my phone. Well, guess what? You of just like... <laughs> Yeah. You're doing the same thing, same thing with retinols, the same thing with anything that would, you know, sensitize the skin. And then we're exposing our skin to blue light. The good news are, um, although SPF sunblocks are controversial and, you know, rightfully so, there are really specific ones that you can and should be using mm -hmm. um, without any risks. Um, blue light blocking is quite easy to do. There are ingredients that are amazing for your skin and specifically to prevent the damage from blue light. One of them is MAP. It's a type of vitamin C, M-A-P. Another one is, um, is ashwagandha. Uh, there, there are many different, dif different ones, um, but these are very common in skincare formulations, especially like higher end ones. But any type of antioxidant uh, is going to help to some extent. 
Mm. Um, there are ones that are healthier for you, ones that are less healthy, but in general, any type of antioxidant uh, would be help healthy, but uh, for, helpful for to prevent blue light damage. What we do, so at Young Goose, what we do, as I said, we started with NAD boosting, but we are also very cognizant that we are the table stack, stacked against us. The more UV radiation, more blue light damage you're going to have in your skin. So in every one in our, of our formulations, we are trying to have at least one ingredient that helps your skin deal with the damage of artificial HEV, blue light, et cetera, in order to create it, that harmony of repair and you know, uh, deflection of damage for that matter. You, well, two things. I have a lot of my clientele are nurses and doctors. So what I find is a lot of chronic inflammation in them because they're constantly under the blue light all day for hours and hours and hours. And then I see this oxidative stress, this inflammation, and no matter how hard we try, it's a real struggle to get that down. I don't, as much as people talk about blue light blockers and, oh, blue light's bad for you, I still don't think people understand how much it is affecting us right down to that genetic and DNA expression. Um, another a favorite of mine, and I'd love to get your opinion on this, for skin health and UV protection and the whole antioxidant aspect is um, I'm a big fan of pure krill oil. And of course, that contains astaxanthin. What do you think of that? That's great. So that is, um, there. first of all, so astaxanthin is a carotenoid. It's, a, it's an antioxidant that's highly expressed in the skin. Um, some people do not really like supplementing on it long term because it does create a little bit of a of a of an orange color to the skin to some extent um so that's why some people are are you know weary but but to just to let you know that's kind of what makes uh gives the pink color to salmon or that orange color to salmon a great great product um supplementing on it definitely helps in in the biohacking community it is uh uh very popular to take if you're going to the beach or anything like that that's going to provide you know sunblock like uh, you can imagine like an spf three or four um so you definitely can and should support that and anti-uv anti-blue light protection with supplementing on anti anti uh, estazanthin and in general if you look at higher higher end uh, SPF or sunblock formulations, you will see antioxidants there because that combination of sun, of of blocking UV rays and you know combining it with an antioxidant ability of the product is tremendously effective and is synergetic as far as as um, the results in mitigating uh, sun damage. Yeah, I. I personally would attribute it to my skin but also I saw one of your um one of your products contains green tea and I was speaking to a client earlier who is still struggling with acne and I was like well I've always swore that green tea is another reason why my skin has been so good and resilient and one of your products contains green tea extract correct yeah so what we do is we um we use it the, the, one of the uh, polyphenols uh, in green tea is called EGCG, and that is a very specific antioxidant in where it, where it does it only targets a specific form of oxidative stress, which is called reactive oxygen species or or, or ROS they're called, and it is normally very tricky to have it survive in a formulation for a long time. Why? Because antioxidants, what they want to do is to basically attach to oxygen, right? Nullify oxygen. But that means that they're highly reactive to air, you know, which is 21% oxygen. Um, another thing is if you heat them up, it's another issue. And, uh, you know, that we can talk about like cold press um, olive oil or whatever. That is why we are trying to keep um, uh, ox things that oxidize away from light, away from, from heat, away from um, you know, air, whatever, whatever is going to make them react. So 
we took about a year and a half to develop a product that doesn't allow basically any oxidation of, of that uh, formula. So it's 98% uh, with 98% integrity as far as applying it to your skin, which is very complicated. Aside from that, and you're 100% correct, that that uh, green tea extract is also antimicrobial and uh, antifungal, uh, anti-inflammatory. So it works in many different levels aside from helping your skin kind of shed, which is very important. A lot of people that have acne because of stress or because of uh, hormonal issues, um, probably any, almost any type of acne, you're looking at also an inability of the body to shed excess layers of skin, which then accumulate in clog pores, etc. cetera. So um, a few molecules can do that. Uh, retinol is one of them. Um, CoQ10 is another, and that green tea extract is another one that does it really well. What are, so our skin very much is a reflection of our inner health. Like you, I'm going to say this again, because people don't see it. If something is happening on your external skin, chances are it's happening on your internal and even yeah. your vitality how much you glow, how much you look energized is a reflection on your skin of your inner health. Are there specific signs that we can look for on someone's skin to say, hey, there's something going on here, or maybe you want to get this looked at, or you might have a deficiency or a blood sugar issue? Wow, that's an incredible question. And really, I mean, we can talk about this all day, but I'll, I'll just say before I answer your question, the skin is a reflection of our inner health across many different direction, uh, dimensions. First of all, if we think of our body as a donut, right? Uh, we have one hole, another hole down there. Um, and whatever passes between those holes isn't really in our body. It's outside of our body. Our gut is kind of our, you know, doorman as far as what gets into our body or not. And our skin is the flip side of that. So a lot of the times what we're going to see is issues in the gut are going to exp express themselves in the skin. And by the way, vice versa. So um, that's why obviously we know acne is connected to gut issues, but we can go on and on and on. Um, if we lack collagen, we're going to see it in the skin. Normally, we're also going to see it in the gut as far as leaky gut, etc. cetera. Um, but aside from that, when we have issues, inflammation, you know, many issues that are that are requiring our body to hunker down and you know and and really concentrate on something specific, long COVID or um, you know many 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 different things, anything that it that it has chronic inflammation attached to it in our in our body, etc. The skin then becomes an organ that is more a protective organ rather than an organ that radiates vitality. If you think of us as a, as creatures of evolution, um, past our reproductive age, let's say in our reproductive age, the skin, and that's what we we as humans care about, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the appearance of our skin, the skin is there to, to be the first line of uh, communicating vitality, communicating vi virality, right? But when we pass that reproductive age, the skin becomes more and more of a barrier of a like a, of a shield between the onslaught of the environment, as we said, and the and the inside of our body. And the that, let's say, shift in our body is why when we treat our body per poorly and age the body, we're really signaling our body and our skin, hey, you're not here anymore to communicate youthfulness and vitality and virality. You are here to um, sacrifice yourself and protect me from damage. And that is, and you're basically creating a skin that's coarser. I'm, I'm, I'm really going, you know, mm -hmm. basically, I'm really bridging a huge gap here, but you're creating a coarser skin, less pliable skin, and skin that is that really does not communicate I'm healthy. I'm, I'm I'm here to reproduce. It communicates. <laughs> I'm trying not to die, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Um, but to answer your question, because what you asked is, is there, are there things that we can only by looking at the skin 
we can then infer if there are issues within the body. So first, I'm going to tell you that uh, that that's an intuitive question because intuitively you know that you could, you know, you can tell someone's age be, by looking at them, and science agrees with you. So there, are, you can really tell someone's biological age by looking at them, and uh, that's a very famous study that that uh, that really showed that. But aside from that. Um, does that what, just to stop you there does that include someone who very much takes care of themselves and then you guess they're 25 but they're really 35 yes i mean yeah um you, my business and life partner um let's say she does less than me to be frank but her biological age through green age is 15 years old and she's 33 and it kills me i Whoa. mean like <laughs> <laughs> and she still get, gets carded and stuff. So, uh, I mean, yeah, that is, of course, one issue, right? There's less inflammation. There is less demand for that. For, for, for There are there's less uh, red flags in the body that the body really needs to go ahead and invest a lot of energy to, to take care of them. So the body is living in more homeostasis, more harmony, can address, you know, issues that are like, uh, you know, skin rejuvenation, et cetera. That's number one. There are many like little things that um, obviously like good sleep is going to be good for the entire organism and also good for your skin. I mean, uh, the skin renews itself the best between um, 11 o'clock and midnight, let's say 10 to 12, okay? Uh, 10 p.m. To, to midnight. And if you're not asleep at that time, not only that, you are also damaging the entire organism. We can talk about like uh, growth hormone, et cetera, but the skin's going to be uh, one of the things that are being, that are being um, left behind, if you would. Yeah. Um, and there are many different like small issues that we can say, but if we zoom, if we, yeah, do you want to say something? No, no, no. Okay. So, so, but if we zoom out, um, you asked me about what, what can we tell? So first of all, one of the hallmarks of aging is called glycation. And glycation is when uh, glucose uh, or, or sugar molecules attach to proteins. And in our skin, it's collagen, et cetera. And what happens is, is that the skin becomes more, um, more rigid because, again, collagen moves less well. So it becomes more rigid. It also becomes um, not as bouncy. So it, this is called the pinch test. If you took your skin and you pinched it in the back of your hands, let's say, or if you if you frowned for 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 a while, like really really hard, and then released it, and, and you can look at yourself in the mirror. Um, what's going to happen is that you are going to um, see how fast the skin bounces back into place, and that is something that with age, due to glycation, is becoming more and more uh, delayed, if you would. So that's one thing we can really tell, you know, connect something physical to something that happen, that ha that ha really happens on a, the most fundamental level. And that you includes also... the wrinkles. When you lose that mm -hmm. resiliency and bounce back, that glycation attaches to the collagen and you see more wrinkles in someone. Well, yes. And again, we talked about snowball effects. So again, not only that you are, you're also obviously skin more rigid, thinner. I, I didn't mention that thinner, um, it's not as bouncy. What happens also, imagine if you took rubber and you took like really, you know, supple or really uh, new rubber and you played around with it, you bent it back and forth, back and forth. Not a lot is going to happen. But if this rubber is really rigid and dry and you play back and forth, that rubber is going to create creases, etc. So you are, you are not only seeing the results right now, but you're kind of also exacerbating results. I mean, damage later on by by moving that tissue that is now less pliable. Mm -hmm. So for example, because the skin around the eyes is the most susceptible to those effects uh, of glycation, when we made our just to get you into the into our mind and what we look at when we make a skincare formulation. So when we went to our lab and we said, okay, we need to make a, a, an under eye product or around the eye product, what do we want to achieved there. We said we want an anti-glycation product. So we did. So we have some peptides there and, and the NAD, et cetera. But that's, that wasn't the, um, the 
the end of the road, we said, okay, we also need to address what glycation causes, but we also want to make sure that the skin does not um, accumulate damage through a repetitive movement in the exact same area. So we have there like specific peptides that is a little bit like Botox. It's not really like Botox, but what it does, it can, it doesn't let the nerves fire the same way over and over and over again. So all the time the skin kind of uh, folds in slightly different locations and you don't accumulate wrinkles because they don't, the skin doesn't create damage in the exact same pattern all the time. So meaning to say it is a it is a snowball that we need to address as we grow older, a few different directions. Um, but you also asked about, can I look at someone and say, you know, you're, you're insulin, you're insulin resistant for that matter, or, or something's going on there. And actually, you know, it's not really an anti-aging conversation, but you definitely can, because uh, if you ever see someone and they have skin tags, a lot of skin tags, what happens there is part of, um, part of having a lot of insulin, a lot of uh, uh, expression of, of, of something called IGF-1, which, mm -hmm. which happens to sugar. What we are getting is a body that wants to be anabolic all the time, wants to be in growth mode all the time. As, and, we, and, and as we said, as we grow older and our information of what it means to be a perfect body becomes murky, that growth is not balanced. So you, we are getting those skin tags out of that signal for growth. And if someone has a lot of skin tags, maybe around the neck and shoulders, and they, you care about them and they're close enough to you, you probably should have a conversation about measuring their A1C and uh, uh, and and their um, C-reactive protein or, you know, measuring how insulin resistant they are. They might be pre-diabetic. Um, yeah. What about the dreaded under eye blackness and bags? Puffiness, what can that bags. tell us? Actually, so funny, uh, that's sometimes, you know, uh, because we're 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 flowing in conversation here. Sometimes you, you ask a question and it, it kind of feeds back to what we were talking about until now. So the, that puffiness in dark circles, what they are really is uh, also a, a a result of glycation from a different issue. I did mention skin thinning, but it's not only thinning; it's also loss of structure. So there's also pressure. There's always pressure behind our eyes behind the skin under the eyes. There's no bone there. So what holds it in place kind of hydraulic, like liquid pressure from, from the blood running underneath, etc. And when our skin is all taut and nice and thick, uh, this the skin kind of withstands that pressure evenly. But what happens when we grow older and the skin around the eyes in relations to other in relation to other skin of the face, becomes thinner, becomes less uh, less able to maintain its form. It also shows the blood underneath. It shows that those dark circles, but it also caves to that pressure. And we're starting to get um, puffiness alongside dark circles. That's With some people, it's going to be only dark circles because the way that their eyes are built... Um, the skin is is kind of tighter there, and 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 we're going to see less caving. But in general, that that relationship is also uh, caused by glycation. What about? And this is really, and I don't mean to take up too much of your time, but this is fascinating. What Absolutely. about um, loose skin and stretch marks? A huge topic within my followers, like very big. So, what can you tell us about that then? Well. I think this is a huge conversation about health in general, and that's kind of what we're what we're doing. You know, we have a whole podcast about. I mean, we have a a our biohacking beauty podcast is mm -hmm. kind of dedicated to bridging the 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 information gap between what's healthy for us as an individual and what drives our health, and then how does it express itself in skin health, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we definitely lose skin, whether it's in the skin or in the body, or even sarcopenia is something that would be driven directly from not only from everything we talked about until now, but also loss of mass, loss mm -hmm. of density, 
bone density, uh, muscle mass. Uh, obviously, it's also about the loss of the fat. Uh, it, you know, let's say we're talking about our face, so the subcutaneous fat that we have there that keeps everything in place. And that's why, you know, if someone's overweight, they're going to look tighter. And then if they lose that weight, that, that, those uh, kind of, su that support is not there anymore. It and there is something, yeah. yeah, there is something to do about it, but it's not going to, we're not going to just eat kale and, and it's all going to be okay. You know, if, if, if you subscribe to eating kale, that's the definition, but um, yeah. So just to answer as far as, um, as far as the body is concerned, definitely muscle mass is probably the most important and the best thing you can do about it. Aside from the fact that it also, you know, blood is very important for our skin, skin health. And if we move blood around and have good blood circulation, that's going to be a huge issue as far as our, as our, um, skin health is concerned. Um, Having said that, if we do things that that call on skin rejuvenation while we're losing that weight or, you know, just living our lives and getting older and losing some mass, et cetera, such as microneedling or more professional treatments that you can do in office, these are things that are really going to make sure that tissue understands that it needs to to rejuvenate itself as well, because it doesn't understand that otherwise. There's no inflammation. Inflammation really, we, we all normally think of it as a bad thing, but inflammation really is a signal. It's a way for, for our body to communicate, hey, repair here. The problem is when, it, where, when it's chronic, but if it's acute, if it's, it's uh, connected to something that is happening that we did, do want to correct in the body, inflammation has to be a part of the process. That's why, you know, in the seventies, we were saying, oh, you have an injury, ice that area. And now we're saying, don't ice that area. The reason is, is because we actually don't want to, and the, by the way, the same guy said both, the guy that invented the mm -hmm. rice method, rest, ice, um, compression, elevate is now against that system. Why is that? Is because we actually don't want to turn off that inflammation. So this, the same way we need to do microneedling, we need to do, you know, other type of stimulatory effects, such as like Morpheus 8, or lasers or whatever that is, radio frequency, because we do actually want to stimulate repair through inflammation there, but controlled inflammation. Uh, that's as far as that. Would red light help at all with stretch marks and loose skin to some extent? Yes, but, uh, I, and I'm on purpose kind of leaving stretch marks for the, a little bit different conversation, mm -hmm. but, or a different tantrum that I'm going on here, but, um, red light does help, especially because it brings more blood to the area, but red light on its own is not a very good communicator for repair. It does do it to some extent. It can support processes that are already happening, but because the amount of time that we can use red light on a specific area before it becomes irrelevant, before it mm -hmm. becomes, there is a point of not really diminishing return, but but nothing happens over like 10, 20 minutes of us exposing that area, it's not going to create continuous signaling for repair. So it can support a process on its own. It's not going to be amazing for, you know, whatever that is. And there are companies, you know, you know, selling thousands of dollars worth of red light therapy equipment, um, you know, professing or, or, or touting, um, this result or that result may most of the time, if you see results only from red light therapy, it means that there was communication there for repair by the body. Let's say we, you know, there was a famous study looking at uh, repair in the skin, but what they are really, you need to read the study to understand is that they exposed that person to very high levels of radiation for like two months oh. before, before using red light therapy. So what we're seeing is the body trying to repair itself can't really do it that well. And then we support it with the red light therapy and then it works great. But it's it's a very good part of the regimen, but it's going to be like a recovery regimen rather than what we use in order to signal repair, if it makes sense. Yeah, um, it does. As far as, but now we're talking about stretch marks because stretch marks is a tear in the collagen matrix. So if they're red, if they are... Um, if they are um, basically still a, a, a an injury, mm -hmm. there is that signal for repair. There is, you know, there is something going on there that we can support. And that is um, 
a place that red light therapy or good nutrition or you know we we can talk about other things um i mean ice baths infrared sauna or any sauna um um fasting fasting doesn't really doesn't really do anything for for that matter but but okay. maybe um helping us to to live a healthier lifestyle and mm-hmm. therefore uh do something but we can talk about massage of that area so so uh, a peptide called kpv mm-hmm. um bpc157 is another peptide uh tb500 or tb4 is another peptide um ghkcu another peptide they all are working w- really well Inject, injected rather than just topical. We use a lot of them topically. Mentioned the eye product. So we have GHKCU, they're a copper peptide, but really as people that use it in their, in their formula, I'm telling you, it's better when injected. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I want to be clear. So um, all of these things are going to support that process. If they're, the stretch mark is red, basically. Okay. If the stretch mark is white, it means that it's fully formed already. And again, we're going back to basically imagine a bone, but you can imagine a wrinkle like that as well, a stretch mark that's fully formed, wrinkle, anything like that. You can imagine a bone that broke and didn't heal well. It's not like we can eat the best food in the world and have 100 ice baths a day and that bone is going, the the body's going to say, you know, that bone really didn't heal well. I'm going to go back and fix it. That doesn't work like that. We need to re-break that bone. So on a very much, much smaller scale, when we have something that's fully formed or does not create inflammation associated with it, et cetera, we really need to find other strategies to communicate to the body that we need repair there. So once these stretch marks become silvery white, you're kind of at a point of no return there. Well, you are at a point of no return as far as... And we can talk about scars, like acne scars for that matter, um, or any scars. Um, you are at a point of no return with this skin that you have right now. Mm-hmm. That's the bad news. The good news are your skin cells turn over. They basically become... Okay, so they're saying that in you know in, in, in um, two to three years, you have half your liver completely new, okay? Mm-hmm. Um 25 years, you have a new heart or half a heart or whatever. Actually, your liver, full liver, two to three years. Skin cells is every 21 to 28 days, depends Mm -hmm. on your age. So most of you is a completely new person after seven years. When I want to say, what I want to say there is, however, and we go back to how we treat our body, the better we treat our body, the better those cells that are now replacing replacing older cells, the better they behave. Um, So if we do have silvery white stretch marks or a scar or anything like that, we need to do two things. We need to, first of all, take care of our body in the most efficacious way, whether it is supplementation, exercise, sleep, uh, healthy eating, skincare, whatever that is. But we also need to stimulate renewal in order for our body to really, you know, want to replace those cells or want to create cells that don't have those marks associated Mm -hmm. with them, right? So we do need to do a lot of, you know, depends where it is in the body, but let's say microneedling, um, uh, laser, um, IPL, intense pulse light, um, and then obviously support it with red light therapy, support it, again, going back, support it with healthy lifestyle. So you want to create a stress in the area to signal the body, this is where we yeah. need this healing and regeneration. That would make me think of as well, um, stretch marks on your legs, for example, body brushing could be helpful because some of these body brushes are like bristles. They're like clean your floors. That is going to cause that redness to signal to that area. Hey, there's some inflammation here. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, having said that, I still do not think that that would replace either professional microneedling or Mm -hmm. at home and, and, or at home microneedling, um, and, or peels, lasers, um, et cetera, radio frequency, et cetera. And the reason is, is the depth 
of mm -hmm. penetration, the depth of stimulation, where we want that stimulation to happen. So yeah, I agree with you. But since we want change on a much deeper level, uh, physically, not necessarily to within the cell, I'm talking about like physically into the skin, into the body, mm -hmm. we want to seek a, something that penetrates deeper. With in the United States and also most of most of the Western world, at least, there is a limit to what you can do at home as far as penetration. That's why we. That's why I mentioned professionals because they're just allowed. You can't buy a micro micro needling device that's beyond like zero point uh, zero point twenty five millimeters or something like that. Like it doesn't exist for you to purchase it, unless you have a license. Uh, it's addition license depends where you are or medical license in other places. So you have to uh, use a professional to some extent. Mm -hmm. But again, if you have patients and you, if if your your bank account is more full of patients than it is full of money, there are things that you can do at home. A simple microneedling roller costs I don't thirty bucks, fifty bucks, and it would last. Yeah. Yes, and it would last. A very long time. What I would say, you know, uh, make sure you sterilize it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, sterilize it. Make sure that 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 you uh, have like a seventy percent alcohol solution to dip it in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, some of the uh, some of them come with some kind of um, like a little receptacle, and they yeah. tell you that some of them don't. But yeah. there, they did. There, there isn't one that you do not need to sterilize. Yeah. This has been fascinating. So a lot of the products that Young Goose creates and offers, they're created pretty much around everything we have discussed. So all yeah. considerations have been taken in pretty much from what I've asked as a young woman curious about her skin health, wanting to prolong youth and vitality. The products have been created with these ideas in mind. I mean, they're created, we call them, you know, I call them root cause products, right? Normally, you know, biohacking is a sexier word. Longevity is a sexier word um, uh, and results driven, but really what they are, they are upstream or root cause products. Instead of saying, you know, I, I you know, again, I, I support whatever you want to do to make your self-esteem improve. I'm, I'm for it. You want to go do Botox, you want to go do fillers, whatever that is, go and do it. It's, it's your call. But most of the things in, in, in as far as products, treatments, whatever that is, what they try to do is make you appear younger and as they do it very well, but you are still aging in the background. So tomorrow you will look older than today for that matter. What we are trying to do is take care of the root cause, what is aging in the skin, change that, improve that, create a functionally younger skin, and then, you know, your skin's going to look better tomorrow, even better next month, and even better next year, et cetera, et cetera. And we do have clients that uh, have shown reversal of biological age by by a few years within a few months, so... That's amazing. So yeah. really the products are trying to provide your body with what it needs to bring the yeah. youth out in itself rather than just a superficial cream that's going to fill in the gaps maybe and maybe does nothing after that. Exactly. Exactly. And the and the what you should ask yourself is first of all is it congruent with my health journey? First of all, it might be, it might not be. Uh, again, um you know, I have a uh, my life partner, she want whatever she would want to do to make her feel feel better, and it's within the the framework of what's healthy for her body. I'd support it wholeheartedly. Not that she really asks me, but I'll support mm -hmm. it. Anyway. Um, but we still are asking ourselves for our self esteem, for our health journey, for uh, really the longevity of us as a human being. What am I going to get in ten years out of what I'm doing right now, out of the budget of you know, $1,500 that I spend a year on, for example, Botox. What am I getting in 10 years? Am I getting something that is going to, you know, make me younger, older, the same? Is it superficial? Is it not? So Young Goose is really trying to address things at its most root cause. And we also make sure that we are 
creating products that you're going to see in the market, but it's going to take the market 10, 15 years to catch up because a lot of education is needed. Like you see from this conversation, we can have a conversation for two whole days. Uh, it's not good for sleep, but we're going to have a comp- conversation for two whole days and we can get into every ingredient, why we used it, etc. So you could uh, do that. Or you could just follow systems that we have online. You can take a quiz that's extremely easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Most quizzes are either irrelevant there to get your email or whatever that is. That's most of the time. And sometimes quizzes are very, very, very complicated. There is a, there is a supplement company that I, I take their supplements. They're, they're, they're called uh, pure encapsulation mm-hmm. and, and their quiz is like <laughs> 10 minutes, you know? So we wanted to do something that's between those, an extremely quick quiz, but really that would give you the results that are relevant to what you're looking for and get you on your journey. And then if you want to educate yourself more, again, you can, you can, we have blogs, our Instagram is like extremely informational. Uh, we have self-care Sundays uh, that people can register to. Um, we have our podcast, obviously. So we do provide a lot of information, but it depends on the energy someone wants to invest in understanding what they're using. Um, it's easy, you know, we use molecules that are very, very advanced and you can't really Google, you know, um, some some esoteric molecule we're using to eliminate malformed cells in the skin and, and figure out, you know, what, how often you need to use it. So we need do need to create protocols around it oh, yeah. and they're available, but we also make it very simple for people like me, by the way, that if it, something's not my passion, I'm not going to invest, you know, hours in researching it. I just want people to tell me what to do if it's not my passion, if I just mm-hmm. want to see results, right? Yeah. And some people don't have even the time as much as they may be passionate, the way society is designed nowadays, people need someone, how much, when, in combination with what kind of thing. So well, what, yeah. I, I'm going to link to everything that you've just said. What I really like about you and the company overall is I feel you very much care. You care so much that you willingly gave me all of the information I asked for rather than some just want to make the sale. They just want to get their product out. They just, that's very much my approach is if you teach people, then you can take them to the well and they will drink. Um, So I really admire that about your podcast, your Instagram, everything like regardless, you want to teach people, this is how we can get healthier overall in society. It's not just about making the sale, but look, if you need some direction, we are here to tell you exactly what to do. And I really admire that in the company because not all companies do that. Yeah, I think, yeah, I agree with you. I think we are, we are, that's our passion project. This company is our passion project. Uh, It's not going to be for everyone. It's not going to be for, um, every uh, t- specific problem someone's trying to, you know, resolve. Um, but we are committed to create the most bleeding edge, you know, groundbreaking products we are interested in or we feel can contribute. And to your point, you know, a lot of companies now, you'll start seeing that in the future more and more, but you know, if you're if you are paying attention, you'll see a lot of companies, skincare companies, venturing into supplements, venturing into hair care products, venturing into, you know, different different avenues, and clothing, whatever mm-hmm. that is. And the reason is really is that they they have a audience that likes them and they want to see how they can increase that sale. Um, when when we have clients that really are like saying, you know, you guys are talking a lot about supplements, just make a supplement already or something like that. We're saying, you know, there are companies who are who are as dedicated to skincare, to, to, to supplements as we are to skincare. And because mm-hmm. that's not our passion, we know what you need in order to create a groundbreaking products. And we recommend those companies, by the way. Yeah. Um, but, but to your point, this is um, this is our calling as, as again, that's the gospel, right? We're preaching our view of what you should be using on your skin, in your body. If people resonate with it, 
and they're gonna use the products, they're going to see the best results they can imagine if they don't resonate with this or the, you know, our products are not cheap. So sometimes, you know, it's, it's, it's about feasibility. Um, the good news are most skincare is okay. I mean, most skincare is, is, is still better than most skincare. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for that. So I'm conscious of our time, but I have one last question for you that Mm -hmm. I'm curious to get your opinion over. So I am educated um, through the Molecular Hydrogen Institute. I don't know how much you know about Mm -hmm. molecular hydrogen, but um, right now in Japan, for sure, and even China, you, the use of molecular hydrogen for anti-aging and skin care is quite popular now with their hydrogen baths, hydrogen showers. There's even some skin care lines that they have managed to refine, as amazing as that is, and hold the hydrogen molecule in it. Um, I have full transparency. I've been using molecular hydrogen twice a day for almost four years now, I experience almost zero inflammation. So I am a big fan of that. But I'm curious to know um, what your thoughts are on molecular hydrogen for skincare. Yeah, Uh, actually, so again, as as you said, I take molecular hydrogen um, together with, by the way, uh, together with um, methylene blue. Uh, This is something, so I'm a cheater. I take uh, troscriptions, methylene blue, which is supposed to be a troch. It's supposed to be Mm. Um, inserted between your gums and your, your cheek yeah. and uh, have your, your uh, mouth half blue. I cheat. I put it in water, let it uh, dissolve together with a hydrogen, t- hydrogen tablet. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that is the way that I consume hydrogen. I do it twice a day. It's incredible. I experience brain clarity. It helps me work, uh, which is what's important to me. Um, as far as again inflammation in the skin, remember, like we want to, we want that perfect symphony of creating inflammation, supporting that process, turning it off when we need it, you know, having that inflammation only associated with what we want it. So it complicated as far as, and and there 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 is really a lot there. Um, just to give you a small example, if we just turned inflammation completely in the skin, and then you have any type of damage, the skin wouldn't know what to that that it should rip repair it. So that's an issue in and on its own. So, I mean, we really need to create that symphony for best results. Mm -hmm. And that is why we don't like uh, molecular hydrogen specifically in skincare, because most of the time you're not going to use skincare seven times a day. And I can tell you, oh, set your alarm clock. I wish I could, because it would make our formulations like really cool. If I told you, you know, every two hours you need to go to your pantry and, or to maybe your pantry, uh, to your, to your, um, uh, bathroom and apply a different product. That would be amazing. Truth to the matter is people don't even brush their t- teeth like three times a day. They do it mm-hmm. twice a day, right? Yeah. Even though dentist is going to tell you something else. So w- as far as the opportunity for us to create, you know, signal for repair, trigger repair, and then support that repair is very limited. And we are very cognizant about the molecules that are going to either enhance that process or slow down that process. And even though we were looking at molecular hydrogen, we're looking at ozone. We're looking at a few things that are that are within that that space. Um, they are just not congruent w- with what we're trying to do. Um, and there are molecules that are more efficient in shutting down or modulating specific types of inflammation that we're interested in. But since we talked about red light therapy, I will tell you that one of the best things to improve red light therapy, aside from our green tea phyto serum, which is a serum that you mentioned with the green tea that improves red light therapy by 200%, is uh, taking uh, hydrogen, uh, molecular hydrogen, about 15 minutes before using red light therapy, um, together with methylene blue, by the way. Um, And that really improves your response, your body's response to red light therapy. So yeah. Amazing. It all it all counts. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see where the molecular hydrogen beauty market goes. It does seem to be quite isolated right now. Um, of course, Japanese and Chinese are always way ahead of us when it comes to stuff like yeah. that. I can't see the market here right now because me and you and the people that do take molecular hydrogen now, we are very small denomination. It's still not um, 
well known about it's still not spoken about enough but thank you for answering that this has been the most awesome conversation i've had in a while <laughs> i like thank you I, I like people who feed my brain so thank you for that you've made my day absolutely so i will um of course put all of your links including the quiz down below and um it's been a pleasure. Like I, when I smile like this, it's like I really enjoyed this conversation. The, I mean, the pleasure is all mine. Uh, you asked very, 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 very unique and and um, questions that show you really you understand what I'm talking about, you're talking about, uh, and the field. So, yeah, that was a great conversation, and obviously, um, that's what we. That's why. For our conversations like this, we 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 live for them. So I appreciate you and your and your interview. Well, thank you very much for spending some of your evening with me, and um, I wish you guys the best of luck on your venture. Thank you. Thank you.